Hey there, gang. Uh, today we're going to look at some simulations and how we can run simulations in Google Sheets and use that to, um, to help us with probability. So I've set up three different sheets here that we're going to run through. Um, I would suggest following along, but uh, feel free to pause whenever you need to. Um, I go through things maybe fairly quickly with the formulas, but that's because you can pause and go back and take another look at them. Uh, so this first one is a game where we have uh, two players. Player one uh, is rolling two six-sided dice, and player two is rolling one twelve-sided die. <clears throat> player one is going to take their two rolls and add them together, and player two only gets one roll. And the person with the higher score is the winner. Um, so obviously both players can get up to a score of 12. Player one would have to roll two sixes. Player two would have to roll a 12. And what we want to look at is how often does player one win? How often does player two win? How often is there a tie? So you might want to just pause the video and think to yourself quickly here, who do you think is going to win more often? Is it player one or is it player two? Um, so we're going to simulate this. So for player one, we need to roll one six-sided die for the first one. So we're going to choose a random number between one and six. So we're going to type in a formula here equals rand between left parentheses one comma six right parentheses and hit enter and now it's giving us a random number of four if i'm in a different cell and i push the delete button it'll change that random number okay now i'm going to copy that over so i'm going to grab the bottom right corner drag it over one because i want to do the same thing with the second die i want to roll that one now i've got two dice and I want to add them up. So equals sum. Left parentheses. And now I could either type in A3 to B3, or I could just highlight both of them. So A3 colon B3. Close the parentheses and hit enter. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Now, player two, I could type in my formula again, or if I want to, I can come over here and do a control C to copy, come back over to this cell, do a control V to paste. The only difference here is I don't want a random number between one and six. This person gets a 12 sided die, so I want a random number between one and 12. Okay. So their number was nine. Now I need to determine who the winner was. So this is going to use if statements. So equals if, left parentheses, if our sum here, so C3, is greater than the roll from player 2, so D3, then, comma, quotes, we want it to say that player 1 is our winner. So player 1, and close the quotes. Comma, if that's not true, if C3 is not greater than D3, then that either means that D3 is bigger or there's a tie. So we want another if statement here. If, now we need a left parentheses again, C3 is less than D3. Okay. So now if C3 is less than D3, that means player 2 won. So quotes, player 2. Close the quotes, comma, so now we're saying if C3 is less than D3, we want it to show player 2. If it's not less than D3, well, we've already covered greater than, so that must mean that they're equal, in which case it's a tie. Okay. So again, what this formula is telling me to do is it's saying, check to see if C3 is greater than D3. If it is, then player 1 wins. If it's not, then do this. Check if C3 is less than D3. If it is, then player two wins. If it's not, then we know that it must be a tie. Hit enter. And so for this first matchup, player two won, 11 to six. We're going to highlight all of those. And we're gonna play this game 500 times. So notice I've started in, in row two or row three here. So I've skipped the first two rows. So instead of going down to 500, I'm gonna to have to add two that go down to 502. So I'm grabbing the bottom right corner and I'm going to drag that all the way down to 502. And then I can let go. 
and you can see it fills in with all of these winners. We even have some ties in there. Row 406 resulted in a tie, 8 to 8. Now I want to see who wins more often. So up here, I want to see if player 1 wins, how often player 1 wins. So I'm going to do it equals. And I'm going to count if, left parentheses. Where do I want it to count? I want it to count this range of values here from F3 all the way down to 503. I went all the way down to, or excuse me, 502. I went all the way down to 502. And I have only want it to count from that column if it says player one. So I put player one in quotes, close the parentheses. And now I want to turn this into a percentage. So I'm going to divide by 500, because I had 500 values there, 500 simulations. Okay. And it tells me 47%. Now I was working in this before, so it's coming up with percents automatically. If yours doesn't, come right up here. Format as percent, just click that button. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do uh, something you may not have seen before. I'm going to come up to this formula and I'm going to put a dollar sign in front of the three. So, a shift four, that's a dollar sign in front of the three and in front of the 502. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because now I'm going to grab the bottom right corner and drag this down two spots. And if we look at this formula, the 3 and the 502 stayed the same. If I didn't put those dollar signs in front of them, they would have changed. The next one would have been 4 and 503. The one after that would have been 5 and 504. They would have kept going up by 1. But we do need to change something here. In this box, we want player 2 to win. So we're going to change that to player 2. And in this last box, we want to know if there's a tie. So we need to change where it says player 1 to say... And now we can see in our 500 simulations here, player one won almost 49% of the time, player two won about 43%, and there was a tie about 8% of the time. Again, you can click, uh, push the delete button somewhere in one of the other cells, and it'll give you new values. And you can do that again and again, and more often than not, you'll see that player one ends up with the higher percentage. Um, it is possible that you'll end up with a situation where player two does end up with a higher percentage. Um, not getting one here, but that is a possibility. Um, it's just not very likely. So we know that player one probably has the better odds in this game. Okay. So that's one example of a simulation. Uh, let's look at another example of a simulation. Let's look at this heads or tails example here. Um, so here, here we want to determine if uh, the longest streak in 20 flips. So we're going to start off with a formula here, equals, and uh, we want to say if left parentheses rand between, so we're using that rand between again, 1 comma 2, so we're just picking two numbers, 1 or 2. So if that random number is a 1, equals a 1, comma, We'll say that that's a heads. And if it's not, comma, then it's a tails. And close the parentheses. We hit enter, and our first one was a tails. And we can drag that down. We said we'd do 20 flips, so we're going to go down to 21, because the first one was our column heading. So we can see different amounts of heads and tails there. Now this cumulative frequency here, <clears throat> we're just going to start by putting a 1 in the first one. And now we're going to say equals if, left parentheses, we want to know if A3 here equals A2. Then we want the streak to continue. So we want to take B2 and add 1 to it. But if they're not equal, comma, then we want it to start over at 1. Okay. So notice the first two are tails, so we got a 1 and then we got a 2. I'm going to grab the bottom right corner, drag that down. And now I can see, oh, I had seven heads in a row here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So each time it saw heads again, it was adding one to the previous total. So now I want to know what's the longest streak. I can type in equals max. And then I'm going from B 
2 down to B21. Okay, down to B21. I want the maximum of those values. And so this one, there was a streak of 4. I push delete, 3, 3, 8. Okay, now these could be heads or tails. So you can see the first 8 this time were all tails. Okay. So that's one way we could simulate a flip of heads and tails and find out how long of a streak we might be able to expect. Okay. Let's look at one more example. Uh, this one is a hot streak. Uh, we've got a player who shoots 50%. Actually, we're going to change that to uh, 40%, so 0.4. And we're going to simulate him taking uh, 10 shots in a game. We want to find out, again, the longest streak. And we want to find out the total amount made. So here, a little bit different than the last time, we use ran between 1 and 2. Here we're going to use equals if rand, and this time we're not going to do between, we're just going to do rand. That gives us a value between 0 and 1. So if that value is less than 0.4, because if it's less than 0.4, if the person makes 40% of their shots, we would expect them to make any of those shots. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So we would want it to write make. If, however, it's greater than 0.4, then we would want it to return with miss. Okay, so we're basically saying the 40% of the values that make up 0 to 0.4 are going to give us a make, and the 60% of values that make up from 0.4 to 1 are going to represent a miss. Okay, we can hit enter, and we can drag that down 10 spots, okay, and then we can see different types of misses and makes. This time, we're only concerned with makes here, so we're going to type in equals if, if a2 equals make, then 1. We're starting the streak, otherwise 0. Close the parentheses and hit enter. So our first shot was a miss, so it's giving us a 0. Now our second shot equals if, if a3 equals make, okay. then we want to add 1 to the previous value. Okay. So if we miss the previous one, this is going to be 0 plus 1, we're starting the streak at 1. Okay. If it doesn't equal make though, if a3 isn't make, then we want it to go back to 0. So we can see those are both 0 because they were both misses. We're going to drag that down. And we can see we didn't have any streaks longer than one there. I'm just going to find a streak longer. Here we go. So at the end, we finished with a streak of three in a row. Okay, so when it saw this make, it added one to the zero. When it saw the next make, it added one to the one to get two. And when it saw this last make, it added one to the two to get three. So now we're looking for the longest streak. So we're going to do equals, max, and we can just highlight those quickly. Close the parentheses and hit enter. Longest streak this time was three. We could also look for the total made. So that's going to be a count if, just like we used on that first page. We're going to count if, and we're going to count this range over here, comma, if it is a make. Okay. And then hit enter. So we got four makes this time, but our longest streak was only one. And we can just keep pushing delete. This time we had six makes, and our longest streak was four. So one thing we could think about here is people say somebody's you know got a hot hand or they're on fire. Well, in 10 shots, you know, would it be that unusual to see a streak of four or to see somebody make six out of 10 if they're a 40% shooter? Okay, and we can push the leap and keep finding those values and see how likely do we think it is that somebody's gonna have a streak of at least four or five or a hump many times he's going to make six or seven out of ten shots and you could do this and you could go and you could change this value to something else you could change it to 0 0.6 and you can see how does that change my results okay so simulations are a quick way to help us uh, determine probabilities for something um, the more simulations we run the more accurate our probabilities are going to be thank you